Hi everyone and welcome back to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Sid Cowley. I am a PhD student studying at the University of York and working at the Cullum Center for Fusion Energy. Today is Wednesday the 20th of September and I'm here to give you your Fusion News Roundup. Stories today include 1. Government announces up to £650 million for UK alternatives to Euratom R&T. 2. Germany plans to spend more than 1 billion euros on nuclear fusion research by 2028. 3. Machine learning hunts for the right mix of hydrogen isotopes for future nuclear fusion power plants. And 4. Tokamak Energy's demo for powers ahead with cryogenic success. And of course, as always, I'll have some bonuses at the end. 1. Government announces up to £650 million for UK alternatives to Euratom R&T. This story is a big one for the future of fusion in Europe and the United Kingdom, and it stems from negotiations that took place earlier this month of the UK's participation in EU science projects such as the Horizon program. With these talks, which took place earlier this month, more than three years after the UK's exit from the EU, the UK made the decision to leave the Euratom Research and Training Programme. This programme coordinates the majority of fusion research in Europe through projects such as Eurofusion and the ITER project. Though initially this sounds like a sad story for the UK's contribution to fusion, it's really more of a pivot in the country's strategy. Because with leaving Euratom, the UK announced a plan to contribute up to £650 million in fusion research and development by 2027, in addition to the £126 million left over from a funding announcement back in November. Now, if released, this budget would be fantastic for the development of fusion research in the UK, and according to the government, this budget would likely focus on developing a fusion workforce, further work on designing the UK's step tokamak, and research into the fusion fuel cycle and tritium handling, one of the biggest open research questions. Now, apparently, continuing in international collaborations will also be a priority with this new fusion program, despite leaving Euratom. However, whether the UK actually continues to be an international collaborative force in fusion remains to be seen. This new funding, coupled with the imminent shutdown of JET and leaving Euratom, the UK's future role in the international development for fusion is certainly exciting, but certainly uncertain. Two. Germany plans to spend more than 1 billion euros on nuclear fusion research by 2028. Now, it may seem like the theme of fusion news this week is countries stepping up their funding, because the next story covers an announcement from Germany this time of a new national fusion program. Speaking at a press conference earlier this month, Minister Bettina stark watzinger of the Ministry of Education and Research outlined a new vision for the German fusion program, including a whopping new 370 million euros from 2024 to 2028. This will amount to more than 1 billion euros invested in fusion over the next four years for Germany, nearly doubling the average budget currently. This new aggressive funding for fusion seems to follow recommendations of a memorandum on inertial fusion energy submitted to the government earlier this year from a team of global fusion experts. Among many other topics, the memorandum recommended strong public-private collaborations and an aggressive focus on laser inertial fusion, both of which Minister stark watzinger highlighted in her recent press conference. Indeed, she emphasized that setting up a fusion industry and supply chain in Germany is an integral thrust of the government's new program. The government even plans to spin out their own company called Pulse Light Technologies GmbH, which focuses on fusion enabling technologies which are not part of the core IP of other companies. Technologies from laser systems to plasma simulations. What an exciting few weeks it has been to see countries really doubling down on their commitment to fusion energy. Let's just hope that they keep up the momentum into the future. Three, machine learning hunts for the right mix of hydrogen isotopes for future nuclear fusion power plants. Our next story comes from physics.org and is an exciting piece of an application of machine learning to fusion. More specifically, the application revolves around the fusion fuel mixture. Now, as I'm sure many of you will know, pretty much all tokamak power plants aim to use a fuel mixture of deuterium and tritium, two isotopes of hydrogen. But what you may not know is that we aren't necessarily planning on using a straightforward 50-50 mix of the two. 
In fact, the effect of what we call isotopic ratio on plasma performance and the tritium fuel cycle is a big area of research, and this ratio will likely need to be very finely controlled in fusion power plants. Because of this, Mohamed Kobuti, associate professor at the Aix Marseille University, has developed a new way to infer this isotopic ratio. In a paper published this month in the European Physical Journal, Kobuti outlines a method of applying machine learning to measured hydrogenic emission from a plasma to determine the isotopic ratio quickly. Though there is a great deal of work to be done before this is applied to a power plant, the general principle may allow for real-time measurements and optimization of the fuels used in the tokamaks of tomorrow. And four, Tokamak Energy's demo for powers ahead with cryogenic success. Our next and final story today comes from Interesting Engineering and covers some recent progress made by Tokamak Energy, a private company in the UK developing fusion energy through high temperature superconducting tokamaks. Now, for context, Tokamak Energy's selling point is to make tokamaks smaller and cheaper to build using high temperature superconductors, or HTS, which allow for incredibly high magnetic fields in the fusion plasma, boosting the fusion performance. So at the heart of this company is their HTS technology. So it makes sense that one of Tokamak Energy's biggest ongoing projects is Demo 4, a collection of HTS magnets assembled in the real configuration it would be in a Tokamak. The aim of the project is to ensure the functionality and reliability of this magnet system in a real configuration. And so far it's going well. In a press release on the 12th of September, Tokamak Energy announced it validated a test on one of the toroidal field coils looking particularly at current and resistance, particularly in the joints of these coils at cryogenic temperatures. But this test is just a first step for the Demo 4 magnet system, which will be fully assembled and tested in 2024. When complete, the system will consist of 44 individual magnet coils and should be able to generate a maximum magnetic field of 18 Tesla. The coils at the center will have 12 million amps of current running through it. That's 120,000 times greater than your average UK household. Since it will represent one of the strongest and most complex HTS systems in the field, the results of this test will be very important for the future of high temperature superconducting magnets in fusion devices. Right, well that's all for our main stories today, but before you click away, we of course have some bonuses as well. For our first bonus story, we have a really fun and exciting piece for a first of its kind tokamak. And no, it's not the biggest or the highest magnetic field or the highest fusion gain tokamak, but rather, it's the first tokamak to be designed, built, and operated entirely by students. The University of South Wales in Sydney has launched a program for students to design and build a small, roughly one meter wide tokamak. Our second bonus today is an episode from the Heard from Heritage podcast entitled Fusion, the Other Solar Energy. In the podcast, they talk with Jeffrey Merrifield, former presidential appointee to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, and they talk about the role of government and regulation in fusion energy. Right, well, that's all for Fusion News this week. I really hope you enjoyed. And if you did, as always, we really appreciate any like, comment or subscription to the channel. As always, if you want to take a deep dive into any of the articles mentioned, their links will be in the description. That's all. See you next time.